week has begun, and we're happy you've begun it with us. This is CNN 10. I'm your anchor, Carl Azus. Our first story, the communist nation of North Korea has apparently carried out its first missile test since 2017, and analysts say it could also be a test of the United States. For years, the two rival countries have been at odds over North Korea's nuclear weapons program and its missiles that could potentially carry a nuclear weapon. In the past, North Korea has said its nuclear program is a right. The United States and other members of the United Nations have said it's illegal, and they've put strict penalties on North Korea's economy to pressure the country to end its nuclear program. North Korea wants those sanctions removed. The U.S. wants North Korea's weapons programs ended. But the two sides did not reach a deal when their leaders met for a second summit in February. And experts say the missile test that North Korea conducted on Saturday could be a warning that North Korea is frustrated that progress hasn't been made since this winter. The White House says while it continues to apply pressure to North Korea's economy, the U.S. hopes the two countries can get back to the negotiating table to reach a deal. Experts who examined this satellite image say it probably captured the smoke trail that one of the missiles left. It's believed to be from a short-range projectile, so it wouldn't technically break a North Korean promise not to fire long-range missiles. Still, analysts say this could be a sign that more tests are on the horizon. 10-second trivia. Which of these events occurred in 1994? President Clinton re-elected, Channel Tunnel completed, World Trade Center bombed, or Cold War ended? All of these events took place in the 1990s, but the only one from 94 was the completion of the channel. In fact, it was on today's date in 1994, exactly a quarter century ago, that the channel opened. And even though it spans the narrowest section between England and France at the Strait of Dover, the channel tunnel is still 31 miles long and it runs as deep as 250 feet. Some had proposed building a long suspension bridge instead, or some combination of railroad and street to join the two countries. What was decided upon has impacted Europe dramatically. The English Channel separated Britain and continental Europe for 8,000 years. Until 1994, when one of the 20th century's greatest engineering achievements connected them linking Folkestone in southern England to Calais in northern France, the Channel Tunnel is the world's longest undersea tunnel. It transports passengers, vehicles, and goods in as little as 35 minutes through two train tunnels, while a smaller maintenance tunnel is used for repairs and emergencies. Some 60,000 people use the service each day. And the $156 billion worth of goods moved through the tunnel each year is believed to account for more than a quarter of all trade between the UK and mainland Europe. Costing $6 billion, the project took 13,000 workers six years to complete. While it was a feat of modern engineering, People had been thinking about tunnelling under the English Channel since the turn of the 19th century, not always with the friendliest of intentions. It wasn't until after the Second World War that technology and European politics caught up to the idea. A 1986 treaty between Britain and France sealed the deal, and construction started a year later. On December the 1st, 1990, construction workers from Britain and France drilled through the last section of rock, separating the two halves of the service tunnel, linking Britain to mainland Europe for the first time since the last ice age. And on May the 6th, 1994, the Channel Tunnel officially opened. Since then, 430 million people and some 410 million tonnes of goods have passed through it. In recent years, the tunnel has become a focal point for tensions around Brexit and immigration. And while the future of the UK's relationship with the EU remains uncertain, the shared achievement the Channel Tunnel represents should stand the test of time.
attention and for the last time, please help me spread out the word. Cinco de Mayo is not Mexico's Independence Day, okay? It's not. Cinco de Mayo, we celebrate the Batalla de Puebla, the Battle of Puebla. Puebla is a state, you know, 85 miles away from Mexico City. It's just basically the victory of the Mexican army against a French army, Napoleon's army. But it is important because the French army had not been defeated in 50 years, and they came over to Mexico to collect a debt. So that's why we celebrate it. No, no, Cinco de Mayo is not as big as it is in America, so thank you very much for celebrating Cinco de Mayo for us. I've been here 14 years. I have never seen such a big celebration on Cinco de Mayo, parades, people on the street, chips and avocado. We don't celebrate it that much. Don't say happy Cinco de Mayo in Mexico because they'll know you're, you're not from Mexico. We don't say that. Maybe we say, have a nice day, but we don't say happy Cinco de Mayo at all. So please don't confuse our Independence Day. Mexico's Independence Day is on the 16th of September, but we start celebrating it on the 15th. So don't confuse it, and I'll tell you in September why. A student from Farmington, Minnesota is making news for his work to help a classmate who is diagnosed with cancer. Luke Peterson is a wrestler, a football player, a hunter, and a fisherman who's also a positive athlete, a program that highlights the inspiring work of American high school students. You can nominate someone you know at CNN.com slash positive athlete. Luke's had a pretty successful wrestling career at Farmington. Um, he was a three-time state entrant, and this year um, took fourth in the state tournament, so he broke through and um, made the podium, which is pretty awesome for him and all the hard work he's done in the off seasons. I love the competition. Wrestling is just you and one other person out there, so you don't really have anybody to blame if you lose. Well, I think he's a natural leader. With the stuff that he does with Charlie Strong, it's just natural for him to sort of be out front and find something to do. I've always known Charlie just because he used to be in our wrestling program in middle school. And I was just scrolling through social media one day and I saw that, that he was diagnosed with a tumor. And then I thought about what about if we got like the whole school and like community to help out. So then I just talked to my parents and we ended up making a t-shirt that said Charlie Strong on the front. Luke came to me one day, it's, well, actually he was texting me one night, I got a few ideas, well, you know, I want to do this, what do you think? And I said, absolutely, let's run with it. So we talked to the team and there was one meet where they all wrote Charlie Strong in their headgear and we had t-shirts out and they made posters and posted around and took donations for the night and um, just sort of ran with it there to try to help his fellow student out. So it's pretty awesome. And then all that money we got from the t-shirts and donations we gave to Charlie's family. It made me feel pretty well wearing those t-shirts, just uh, giving back to someone that has been a friend of mine for a while just having that support system he had of everyone that was wishing that he got better. We have a swimmer um, that's also a ninth grader that was diagnosed with cancer also. The swimming team sort of followed Luke's lead and did a hashtag Jacob Strong and did their own thing. All my coaches always tell us uh, you can't do the big things if you don't do the little things. So even if it's like something little like holding the door for someone or helping someone and uh, eventually if you start doing those little things the big things add up. He means well, he's going to do the right thing and uh, he's just a great kid. The world's tallest dive coaster is now open for business, so buckle up and see if you can handle the suspense. This is what Canada's Wonderland theme park looks like from the Yukon Striker, a thrill ride that actually suspends riders for three seconds before they dive straight down. So you get a good gander at where you're going, and then you go there. The dive beneath an underwater tunnel is one part of it. The four inversions and 80 mile per hour top speed are others. A dive coaster is one that dives straight down. This is said to be the tallest, longest, and fastest dive coaster on the planet. So you won't find gold in them there hills, but if you don't mind the prospect of hitching up to a mine wagon that tunnels its way through stalactite twists and turns, it might not be an horrible idea to stake your claim on what could be the mother load of all dive coasters. I'm Carl Azus, mining puns for CNN 10.